How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. Today Modern Warfare 3 is launching. We got early access to get you the best settings for maximum performance, maximum frames per second, as well as smoothness in your game. If this video helps you out, please drop a like and comment on the video to help with the algorithm and consider subscribing for more optimization tips and tricks to help you perform the best that you can in game. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, once you get into the display tab, I'm just going to briefly go over these settings. So most of these are personal preference or just by default. The first thing I'm going to talk about because it's the most important by far is anytime you're doing any kind of graphic settings, changing them and whatnot, you're going to want to restart your shaders. So what you're going to do is go ahead and click on this. It's going to delete your shader cache and restart the preloading once you start the game. Uh, and it only take effect after you restart the game. So once you do all the settings, as always, you're just going to want to close the game out, relaunch it. You're going to let your shaders preload and uh, wait for that to finish before you get into a game. So we'll go ahead and click restart. So that way we get that out of the way. We just want to do that anytime you change any sort of major graphic settings. The rest of these display mode, I've run on full screen borderless just because I stream on Twitch. I tab out all the time. But if you want the least amount of latency, full screen exclusive is probably better. Display monitor is your regular gaming monitor. Display adapter should be your graphics card. Screen refresh rate uh, should be your max refresh rate for your monitor and your native render resolution for your monitor. If these aren't properly set, if you get a full screen exclusive, you can choose these yourself. But when you're on borderless, it locks it out for you. Uh, aspect ratio should be set to automatic for pretty much everybody. Display gamma should be 2.2 for monitors. Brightness is personal preference. Constrain mouse to game window is just to keep your mouse inside the, the confines of your monitor. NVIDIA reflex low latency. I always play on on and boosted just because I tend to hit uh, CPU bound situations where if you notice my GPU time, my CPU time, if you notice these, uh, the CPU time is higher than your GPU time like it is here. That means I'm CPU limited. Granted, I'm in the menu, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh, you'd want this an on and boosted. If you're the other way around where GPU time is uh, significantly higher than your CPU time, then you might want to just leave this to on. But on and boosted works for most people. Eco mode preset. Uh, this is just for in menus. I have mine usually set to either low consumption or efficiency, lowers how much power you draw. VSync should be off. VSync and menus should also be off. Custom frame rate. I usually run mine on custom instead of unlimited with a max of 300, 60, and 30. Focus mode should be turned off all the way to zero. Hit apply, and then the bread and butter, the quality section here. Graphic preset, we're gonna go ahead and set this to minimum. This is gonna cha probably change your render resolution if you are on a different upscaling. Uh, so you wanna make sure this is set to 100. Dynamic resolution, you wanna make sure this is turned off. For upscaling, I personally always run Fidelity FX CAS just because it makes the screen so sharp and so clear and, and, and looks really, really good. Um, but if you're really struggling to get FPS and you're just trying to get the absolute max FPS, uh, and you are GPU limited, so your GPU time is higher than your CPU time pretty much consistently in the game. Uh, you can try NVIDIA DLSS if you have an NVIDIA card, Intel XCSS, um, AMD FSR, anything like that to improve your frame rates if you are GPU limited. If you're CPU limited, this is not going to matter at all and should just run on FX CAS because it's going to make your game look a lot clearer and a lot better. Uh, strength should be set to 100, VRAM target scale. I probably recommend leaving on default for most people. Because once we're done, it's only going to have about two to three gigabytes of VRAM, which most people nowadays have that. So if you have less than, then I would say about six gigs, I'd probably raise this up a little bit. If you have more than that, you probably lower it down a little bit, but I'd just leave this on default for most people. Uh, variable rate shading is an interesting setting. It actually improves your FPS quite a bit if you're GPU limited. And I haven't, I haven't noticed any sort of major graphical issues. This, this setting might change for Warzone. But for multiplayer, I'm personally going to run it on because it does improve your frame rates quite a bit. And I don't really notice a visual uh, impact for that. So for texture resolution, this one doesn't have a huge impact on performance, but does have quite a bit on textures, obviously. So I'd recommend running this on low or normal. I'm going to probably run this on normal just because it, it only drops me about one to two FPS to have it on normal. And the game just looks a lot better. But if you're just max FPS, you can put that on very low. Texture filter and isotropic, you want that on low. Depth of field should be off. Detail quality. Level should be low. Particle resolution should be very low. Bullet impact should be off. Persistent effects should be turned off. Shader quality should be set to low. On-demand texture streaming should be turned off. Local texture streaming should be set to low. Shadow quality should be set to a very low. Screen space shadow should be off. Ambient occlusion should be off. Screen space reflection should be off. Static reflection quality should be set to low. Tessellation should be off. Terrain memory, I actually want to leave this on max. Uh, volumetric quality, we want this on low. Deferred physics, we want off. Weather grid volumes, we want to make sure that's turned off. And water quality, turn that off. And hit apply. Just get all those settings there. Now, all these settings are obviously going to make your game not look the best in terms of visual fidelity, but it's going to increase your clarity, increase your FPS, and just overall smoothness of the game. 
If you're looking for a more balanced option for the game to look visually better, I just, when I play and, and most people that play competitively or just want the most performance, don't really care that, that much about visuals. They just want the game to be clear and to be able to see the enemies as quickly and easily as possible. If you're looking for a more balanced where the game still looks good uh, and has maximum FPS, I do have a, another video that I made for the campaign that actually goes and breaks down every single setting, how much performance loss. So if you wanted to see that, um, and adjust these settings to your own personal preference. You definitely can do that. So I, I'll, I'll link that video on the screen now, as well as in the description down below. But this is just mainly for max FPS, max visual clarity, all that kind of stuff. So we'll apply those settings there. For view, again, this kind of like display tab, this is all kind of personal preference, except for the main ones uh, that I'll talk about. Our motion blurs should be turned off completely. They hog FPS and make your game look awful. Film grain should be set to zero. And then the two big ones, the first person and third person camera movement, these should definitely be set to 50% to get rid of uh, screen shake when you're shooting or when you're, there's explosions or anything like that. Makes your game uh, not nearly as jumpy and jittery. And then the rest of it's all personal preference. You can copy my settings if you like. For FOV, really anywhere between 90 to 120 is what most people play on. Uh, if you do up increase your FOV, make sure you are on affected and everything else should be set there. Uh, so that's everything for the actual in-game graphics. Let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the config file settings. One quick thing before we get into the config file that I really wanted to mention was to make sure you have XMP on. The way to tell that is go down to your taskbar, right click on it, open up your task manager, go over to your performance tab, and then you might have to hit more details down below, but then click on memory uh, and look at your speed for your memory. If your PC was built within the last probably three to four years, if this is below 3200 megahertz, more than likely you don't have either XMP on or DOCP or Expo if you're on AMD. And I have a whole video that I'll, I'll link down below on how much RAM actually matters. But the difference between like 2166 and 3600 for me was like 70 FPS on Warzone. So just something I want to stop in real quick and make sure you guys double check that you have XMP enabled. If you don't, if this is below 3200, uh, just look up how to enable XMP. It's super, super simple to do uh, and has huge, huge performance implications. So just wanted to let you know that. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at the config folder. Uh, the way to get access to that is either in the search bar, type in File Explorer, or just click on the icon if it's on your taskbar. From here, you're going to click on Documents. You'll see a Call of Duty folder. Double click the folder, double click the Players folder. And then from here, you're going to see a bunch of different files and folders and stuff like that. The one we're looking for is labeled options.4.cod23.cst. So the options for COD23CST. Before we open it, we're going to go ahead and make a copy of it just in case you happen to make a typo or any, any weird errors or anything like that if you do make adjustments to it. Uh, so to copy, you're just going to go ahead and right click on it and hit copy. And then we'll minimize this, go to our desktop and right click and hit paste. And now you'll have a copy of that file. Uh, just for whatever reason, like I said, if it messes up, I have a typo and incorrectly type something, uh, you have a file to, to go back on. If you've never opened it before, you're going to single click on it. You're going to right click on it and you're going to click sit open with. And then you're going to either choose notepad if it's up here or you might have to click more apps and choose notepad down there. And then just always use this to open up .cst files. Hit OK. This will open up your config file here. All right, once we've got that pulled up, I'll go ahead and pull over here all the settings we're going to change. I know it looks pretty daunting, but it's actually fairly simple and straightforward, and I'll explain it as quickly as I can here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the renderer worker count. This one actually does quite a bit of help when it comes to the CPU operation, how much uh, FPS you can get from the CPU. But it is still very new right now because the game is just, it's still, while the time of recording this, it's still... Uh, in early access pre-release. So I haven't been able to do a whole lot of testing. I've only been able to test my own personal CPU, which is a 10 core 20 thread. And it seems like it's still the exact same numbers and same performance as Modern Warfare 2. So hopefully all these numbers apply. If you don't want to test it yourself, I would just leave it to defaults until I can get a new video out that has more extensive testing and all that kind of stuff to see exactly what the best render worker count is for every CPU that I can get a hold of. But as of right now, I would recommend these for most people because I believe they're going to be the most accurate. So for me, I have a 10 core 20 thread. The way to find that out is to pull up your task manager. So if you right click on your desktop uh, down there at the bottom and open up task manager, I'll pull this over here. We're going to go to the performance tab and then you might have to hit more details. Uh, but click on the CPU and then from here, you're going to see how many cores you have. I have 10 and how many logical processors, which is 20, which is logical processors are the same as threads. So you'll want to double check that. 
um, and make sure you have whichever whatever CPU you currently have. Mine's a 10850K. So you have the right number of cores, right number of threads. Uh, but whatever that number is, you can just uh, match it up with the numbers that I have here. So if you have an Intel CPU without E cores, uh, and let's say you have an eight core 16 thread uh, Intel with no E cores, you would put six in this value. I have a 10 core 20 thread. I'm going to change this 12 here to a seven because I know that's the best for mine. Uh, if you have a newer Intel CPU with E cores, with efficiency cores, like I said, this is kind of a copy and paste from Modern Warfare 2. So I haven't tested 100% yet, but uh, if I had to guess, it's going to be the same number of performance cores. So let's say you have a 12600K, you're going to have six, six performance cores, so you'd want to put six in there. Uh, similarly with AMD, for my limited testing with AMD, it seems like whatever your number of physical cores is, is how many, the number you're going to want to put in there. So if you have a six core 12 thread, you'd want to put six, eight core 16 thread, you'd want eight. Uh, if you had a 16 core 32 thread, you'd want 16, so on and so forth with AMD. But again, I haven't tested it. So if you don't feel comfortable changing that, by all means, just leave it on default and you'll still get pretty good performance from the rest of these settings as well. So we'll go ahead and continue on. So the first setting we're going to change aside from that is going to be the corpse limit. So let's go ahead and scroll down. Uh, and we're going to scroll down until we get to the gameplay tab here. We're going to see corpse limit is set to 28. By default, we're going to go ahead and change this to zero, which is the lowest number here. So you just inside the parentheses, delete the current value of 28 and delete it down to zero. Uh, next one underneath that is the show blood. We're going to make that false. So you delete inside the quotation marks, you delete true, and then type false in all lowercase and make sure it's spelled properly. Uh, underneath that is the blood limit. We're going to go ahead and delete false and change this to true. And then the blood limit interval, we're going to go ahead and max it out. So we're going to go ahead and copy the 2000 in there, which is the max value, and paste it inside the quotation marks of 2000. The one underneath that is going to be show brass. We're going to want to go ahead and change this to false so that when we shoot our guns, the uh, ejected brass actually doesn't show on the screen and hog up screen real estate and resources and stuff like that. Uh, and that should be everything in the gameplay settings. So we'll go ahead and scroll down until we get to the graphics tab here. From here, we're going to be looking for texture filter. Uh, mine's already defaulted to linear, but you just want to make sure if you have any of these other options, you're going to want to copy the linear option. So highlight the texture filter linear option. Go ahead, highlight, copy, and then inside the quotation marks, we're going to go ahead and paste it inside to make sure it matches exactly. Corpses calling threshold is going to be the next setting that we're going to change here. Uh, by default, it should be 0.85. Mine's already set to 0.5, but you're going to do the same thing we did up there. Uh, highlight the lowest value of copy inside the quotations, paste it. That way it is the, the lowest value. And then the subdivision levels, the setting underneath that, this should, I believe, default to three, but again, mine's already set to zero. So we're going to go ahead and copy the zero and paste it inside of the quotation marks for the lowest value there. Continue to scroll down just a little bit until you find the Sun Shadow Cascade. Uh, this one's going to default to high two to three cascades. You're going to want to go ahead and copy inside of this bracket where the word L for low starts and then inside of the comma. We're going to go ahead and copy that and inside of these quotation marks, again, paste it so it matches exactly the lowest value there. Um, and then the other setting underneath that a little bit is the Reflection Probe. Half resolution, want to make sure that is set to true, which mine is by default here, uh, but some do default to false. So you're going to want to go ahead and delete if it says false and type true um, in all lowercase letters there. Scroll down. Uh, the next one is the GPU upload heaps. Uh, this one is if it's applicable to you. So if you have resizable bar enabled on your BIOS and your graphics card is capable of it, you want to make sure this says true. Uh, that way it can utilize uh, the VRAM more effectively. Um, and then the last thing we're going to take a look at is enable velocity based blur. We're going to want to set this to false. That way it gets rid of any sort of blur because we don't want blur at all on our screen. So we're going to go ahead and set that to false here. Once you have all these settings set or the ones you want to run, we're going to go ahead and up to the file. You'll see just above that little asterisk next to the, the file name. Uh, if you hit file and hit save, you'll see the asterisk goes away, and that means the file is actually saved and is set to go. So you can go ahead and close out of that and close out of this window. All right, and that should be everything for today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. 
I really, really appreciate you again. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to have a lot more videos just like this one uh, to help your gaming experience go through the roof. So I really, really appreciate it. Drop a like and comment on the video down below. Uh, if you don't have any questions or anything like that, feel free to just leave a like an, your favorite emoji or anything like that. But if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I do my best to answer as many comments as I can. Sometimes it gets a little out of control with how many comments, but I do my best to get down there. So I appreciate you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. First things first, you're definitely going to want to make sure you have all of your drivers up to date. So you're, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, make sure NVIDIA drivers up to date. They just released one not too long ago for a new driver for Modern Warfare 3 specifically. So make sure you have that driver installed. Similar with AMD, make sure you're all set up with that or if you have Intel or anything like that. Just make sure your drivers and your Windows updates are all set and ready to go for the new game.